Hello everyone, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com. I'm back today with another tutorial for a bracelet. This one combines the herringbone and a netting stitch together all in one. We're gonna be using some sparkly bicones today, two colors of Delica beads, and also a selection of 15 OC beads. The clasp I'm using is a three loop bar clasp that slides together. And I'll be using a size 11 beading needle and some six pound 0 0.006 inch fire line in the black satin. Now everything you need can be found at eurekacrystalbeads.com. I'll leave a full list of materials. The colors I'll be using will be on the blog post, but I'll leave all the materials and links right down below the video so you can check out where you can get your hands on these items. I want to point out that you can use any kind of four millimeter bicone for this particular design. You can use all one color, you can alternate the colors like I did in this one, and they could be Swarovski, Preciosa, Chinese Crystal, whatever bicones you can get your hands on. Also for the seed beads, you don't have to use Delica beads here. I just did that in the example pieces, but you are welcome to use regular seed beads if you want to. Feel free to switch that up. And the reason I'm using a size 11 beading needle is because we'll be going back and forth through some of these little itty bitty 15 O seed beads and using a 11 can make that process a little bit easier. If you need to switch off between needle sizes, feel free to do that. Now there are multiple ways you can go about completing this type of design, but the way we're gonna do it today, we're gonna actually start in the middle, which is something I don't normally do, but I think it'll work well for this tutorial because it will show you all the steps needed and then you can always back up the video to complete the other side. I'm also gonna be starting with about 10 feet of beading thread, leaving a five foot or longer tail, which you'll use to pop your needle on and complete the other side of it. So we're gonna start right about here, and one row at a time, we're gonna start creating this netting. So go ahead and thread your beading needle, and we will jump into this tutorial. We'll begin by picking up 16 15 o seed beads. And once you have those on your needle, you're going to pull these down to about the halfway point of your thread. So don't pull them all the way down to your tail if you are using that 10 foot length. Pull them down about halfway, leaving yourself about five feet as a tail on the other end. Make sure you have 16 of these 15 O's on your thread. And then what you're gonna do is take your beading needle and go back through just the first three of those seed beads. Sew back through the first three. And then you're gonna skip the next seed bead and sew through the next three. So skipping seed bead number four right there, I'm just gonna sew through the next three seed beads, just like that. And you can see when you pull it, that creates a corner on this loop that we have where we skipped that one seed bead. And we're gonna do the same thing all the way around. So skip the next one and then sew through the next three. And that one's gonna pop out too. And then skip the next one and sew through the next three. When you arrive at the corner where you started, you're gonna still skip over that last one and then proceed up through the next three seed beads. Now when you pull it, this is what you have. Now it looks more like a square than a circle and you want to then proceed through the next seed bead that is sticking out on a corner you may have had to play with this a little bit with your needle to get those little beads to pop out, but once you start adding the bicones, these will take on more of a diamond-like shape without having to do that. So I am continuing through this corner. 
And now we're ready to add in our first bicone, and we're gonna be attaching that from one corner to the other side. So I'm gonna pick up a bicone, and you see how we're coming out of the right-hand side of this seed bead. I'm gonna proceed through the left-hand side of the seed bead on the opposite corner. And when you pull this, get it to sit on one side of your square that you have created or your diamond shape. And it doesn't have to sit completely inside of the 15O seed beads. It can be sitting up just a little bit, but that just cradles it and kind of frames those bicones as you go. To reinforce our bicone a little bit, I like to go back through the bicone. Then go back through that corner seed bead in the opposite direction that we went through it before. And at this time, you're ready to create your next seed bead diamond that will attach to this one. Instead of picking up 16 seed beads this time, you only need to pick up 15 because we have our 16th one that is already in place at the corner where they're going to join. So pick up 15 seed beads. And once you have the 15 on your needle, you can go back through that seed bead on the corner in the opposite direction of where we're currently exiting. And now, similar to before, we're gonna go through the first three seed beads that we get to, skip the next, and repeat that all the way around till we end up back at this corner. and go ahead and go through the seed bead on the corner. And there you go, you can see you have your next diamond shape in place right down there and you're ready for your next bicone. So pick that up and then go through the seed bead on the end right there in the opposite direction of where you're coming out just like that. Make sure your bicone is sitting on the same side as the one before it. So this one's popped up a little bit, just like the other one. You can see that it is not quite going through the other side. It's just sitting there right on top, cradled by the seed beads. And then again, if you wanna do that reinforcement step, I just like to go back through that bicone one more time. Then we'll go back through that corner, 15-0 in the other direction. And now we would need to make our way over to the seed bead on this other end in order to make our third diamond that's gonna be in the center of this bracelet. So just follow your thread path heading through those next three seed beads. Once again, skip the corner seed bead there at the top and head through the next three seed beads. And if you can, you can also go through that fourth one on the corner, which is where you wanna be coming out to start your third diamond. Now you'll just repeat the previous step to create your next ring or diamond of seed beads. So again, you're gonna pick up 15 of your 15 O's. And 
And once you have 15 of those on your needle, you're gonna go down through the seed bead on the corner in the opposite direction to get your next ones in place. And you're gonna go through the next three skipping the fourth and then just go through the next three just like you did before there we go we're coming out of the third seed bead there, go ahead and proceed through the one on the corner once again. And now pick up your third bicone and head down through the seed bead on the other corner. Give that another reinforcement. And then continue following your thread path until you get to the other end of the diamond. and you can head out through that fourth seed bead as well. Now you can get out your delicas or the other beads you're using for the herringbone portion if you're ready to add those. And we'll work on the next step in our bracelet. All right, next we're going to be adding a little strip of herringbone and I'm alternating two different colors of these 11 Odelicas. You don't have to do that. You can use one color if you want, but I just happen to like the way that striped look adds an interesting accent to the bracelet. So I'm gonna start out with one color and I'm gonna pick up two Odelicas in that color and I'm gonna go back through the same corner seed bead that we're currently exiting in the opposite direction. And when we pull this, the two Delicas are gonna be sitting right on top of that corner seed bead. Let's go up through the Delica on the left. And then we're gonna go down through the Delica on the right back through the seed bead. And come out of the Delica on the left, which gets us into position to pick up our next color Delica. We're gonna pick up two of those. And just like we need to do in the herringbone stitch, we're going to be going down through the Delica on the right to attach those two on top of them. Go back up through both beads on the left. Just like that and repeat this as much as you want. I'm gonna do a strip that is six beads in length. So I'm gonna pick up my first color there, two of those again go down just through the brown Delica on the right and up through the two on the left. And this is herringbone. If you have not done that before, pick up two more in the next color, go through the bead on the right and then go up through the two seed beads on the left. So again, with our first color, down one and up two. 
I have a video tutorial on the basic flat herringbone beading stitch. I'll try to link that in the corner as well. And then our next two, and actually I'm gonna make this seven beads in length, not six. I'm gonna end on that turquoise color. And pull that nice and tight so that all those beads are together. You don't have any gaps. And we're going to attach a 15-0 right in the corner in the center of those two delicas on the end. So pick up a 15-0 seed bead and then go down through just the top bead on the right-hand side. That's going to give us the bead that we need to start our next diamond of seed beads. Now go back up through the delica on the left and head back through that seed bead that you just added. So to create our next diamond, as you probably figured out by now, we're gonna be picking up 15 more 15-0 seed beads. And once you have those on your needle, you're going to go back through that 15-0 that is on the end. And I'm gonna pause it here because we're gonna be doing the exact same thing that I already showed you where you're going to go through three, skip the next bead, go through three, skip the next all the way around till you're coming out of the corner bead that you're currently exiting and add your bicone in again. So follow the same step that you did at this point of the tutorial and we'll meet back when we get to the end of this diamond again. All right, so once you have created your next diamond, you're going to add another little segment of herringbone stitch with your two different colors of delicas. This time I decided to make this one a little shorter. And these are things you can think about when you are deciding how long to make your bracelet. The design and exact pattern that I did makes approximately a seven inch bracelet. You can always add more length to these little strips. You can change the placement of them. You can add more of these diamonds. All those sorts of things will alter the length of your bracelet. So to add my next little strip of herringbone, I'm gonna pick up two more delicas, just like we did before, same exact thing. And I'm gonna go through the seed bead on the corner that we're currently coming out of, but in the opposite direction. I'm gonna head back up through the delica on the left and you can go back through this one more time if you want before moving on or you can just pick up your next color so i'm just going to go ahead and continue picked up two more and going down through the right and up through the two beads on the left pull nice and tight picking up my other two going down one and going up two. Again, pull nice and tight. And when you get to that end, you can pick up another 15-0 seed bead like we did before in order to go back down that delica that's sitting on the right. And that's going to give you another seed bead in the corner there in place to create your next diamond. And now to get yourself in position, just go back up that delica and back through the 15-0. I'm gonna bring back the example piece to give you some context as to where we are and what you'll do next. 
All right, so as you can see, as a comparison, we are at this point of the bracelet on one of our strips. You can follow the same instructions to make more of your diamonds and more of your herringbone stitch. If you wanna do it in the exact same way, you'll repeat another segment just like this, diamond, three more beads in herringbone, another diamond, then more beads in herringbone, and then add three more diamonds at the end. You can follow the same types of steps that we did here. And that's where we'll meet back and I'll show you how you can begin attaching your clasp and start your next row. All right, welcome back everyone. So once you're ready to begin attaching to your clasp, you can pull one side of that clasp off and we're going to be starting coming out of this end of the seed bead right here on the last diamond. And I'm just gonna pick up eight 15 O's. And I'm gonna go through the, let's just go through the middle loop of this clasp. So go through that as well. And then you can go back through that corner 15 0 once again. And that's just forming a loop right around the middle loop of our finding component. And I like to go through that loop of seed beads one more time just to reinforce it. So go through all eight of the seed beads you added. and go through the corner seed bead also. All right, so now you have a loop around a loop that is holding the middle of this clasp in place. Now let's start to work on our top row, which is gonna attach to this middle row, and you'll pretty much be doing the same thing on the other side. So this next part of the video will show you this strip as well, since it will be pretty much symmetrical. And to start, we're gonna be heading up, following our thread path through these next four seed beads. So go through the three as well as the one on the corner. And this is going to be our attachment point. So kind of like we did before when we were doing these rows of diamonds connected together, we're gonna pick up 15, 15 O's. And once you have those on your needle, just like before, you're gonna head back through that same 15 O on that corner that you were already coming out of. Also, like before, go through the next three. Skip the next seed bead and go through the next three. Skip the next seed bead and go through the next three. Get those little corners to pop out. Skip the next and go through the next three as well as the one on the corner there. Now you have your first diamond in your top row. We wanna continue on until we're coming out of the seed bead on the left corner. So proceed through the next four seed beads coming out of that one. And now since we are in the spot, we can go ahead and pick up our bicone that's gonna be sitting right in there. So pick that up. And again, just like before, go up through the seed bead on the other corner there.
And instead of reinforcing it right here, we can just go ahead and pick up eight more 15 O's. And make our next loop that's going to attach to this loop of our clasp. So get eight 15 O's on your needle and go up through that next loop of the bar clasp. Then head through that corner seed bead again and pull that and also go through the eight seed beads again that you just added to make that a little bit stronger. And then come out that corner seed bead on your diamond. Now go back through the bicone once again. And then exit out the corner 15 of seed bead right there on the end. I'm just going in the opposite direction of the way that we attached our bicone in the first place. Pull that all nice and tight. And now we're ready to create our next diamond. This one's gonna be done just a little bit differently since we already have now two connection points in place. We have this one that we're coming out of and this one right here on the corner. You can see our thread is heading off away from the center row, not towards the center row. So at this point, we're going to be picking up 11 15 OC beads to begin our next diamond. So pick those up, 11 of them. And once you have 11 of them on your needle, you are going to head through that seed bead that's right on the corner of the next diamond of the middle row. Then we wanna pick up three more seed beads and we're gonna head back through the seed bead on the corner, kind of where we started that diamond. Pull this all together, bring all the beads together. And you can see what's starting to happen. We want to do the same thing we did before pretty much and go through the next three 15 O's. Skip over the next 15 O and go through the next three. Skip over the next 15 O and then go through the next three. You can skip this one on the corner and then go through the next three. And then come out of this seed bead, the one where we started that diamond shape. That gets us into position to add our next bicone inside. So pick one up and then go up through the seed bead on the opposite side. Now we'll go back through the bicone to reinforce that a little bit. Head back in the other direction. And again, we'll follow our thread path to get to the other side of this diamond shape again. Just going through the next three seed beads there. We'll skip over that next one at the corner and go through the next four and come out this corner. Now that you saw how to attach one diamond, you know how to attach the next one pretty much. But what you wanna pay attention to is what direction is your thread coming out on this side. This time the thread is coming out of the side that is pointing more towards the middle of the bracelet, meaning that we don't wanna first string on 11 seed beads. We're heading this way. And to complete this section, we just need three seed beads. So pick up three 
and then you can head through the corner of the middle row that is already in place. And when you pull this, you can see how it's bringing these two rows together. And now is when you will pick up 11 seed beads and swing around and complete that diamond. So once you have those on your needle, then you'll go down through the seed bead on the corner of this side. Then go through the next three seed beads, skip this corner, go up through the next three, skip the next one, proceed through the next three, skip the next, and then go through the next four to be coming out of that corner. All right, grab your other bicone and you can go through the opposite side of that corner. Pop that in. Then go back through and back around to come out of the free corner. Then you'll continue with your herringbone. So complete a strip just like you did before that is the same length as this one that will be right next to it. And that's going to be sitting freely. So I'm gonna make my little strip of seven beads wide and then add a 15-0 on the end of that and then we'll meet back and continue on. Welcome back again, everybody. So I've done the herringbone strip. As you can see, I have a seed bead on the end and we're looking at our thread. It's coming out toward the middle of our bracelet. So to do the next step, once again, you'll be picking up three seed beads and heading through the corner. When you pull that, you can see you're starting to attach to this next diamond. So the diamonds are gonna be the connector points for this bracelet. Anytime you see one of these diamonds that's your netting, it's going to be attaching to the rows next to it. When you see the herringbone stitch, that's gonna be free and open and just sit by itself, not attaching to another row. So the main thing is as you go, just pay attention to which side your thread is coming out as you add your next diamonds in that smaller gap toward the middle of the bracelet, you'll need to add three and then 11. If your thread is going out that way out in the open away from your bracelet, you'll add 11, go through the corner and then add three. Let's add our next 11 seed beads. And then go back through the seed bead that's on the corner. Pulling this all together, we can go through our next three seed beads that we had added initially. Skip the one in the corner, go through the next three. Pull tight, skipping one, going through the next three. Doing that until you come out of the corner again, where you will add your next bicone. 
So follow the same procedure all the way down, creating this next row and attaching where you see the netting. And then we'll meet back once you get to the end of this top row. Welcome back again, everyone. I hope your bracelet is coming along nicely. I've completed the top row, as you can see, and coming out of the corner seed bead there. And you know, there's more than one way to do this. You can go all the way to the end of your bracelet if you want to with each of these rows all at once, or just continue like I'm showing you. And to finish up this side, we want to make our way through the seed beads down to this point to start our next diamond because that's gonna be our third and final row of this bracelet. I have my tail thread coming out there, but this is my working thread. I'm just gonna pick up my work and turn it this way because it's a little bit easier for me. And we want to just continue down through the three seed beads and that fourth one there on the corner of our next row. Continue through the next three seed beads, making our way down there. You can skip this seed bead on the corner and then just go through the next three and that fourth one there on the corner, which is where we want to be coming out to begin our next diamond on the brand new third row. And at this point, you're going to be working from left to right towards your clasp again and you're gonna start by using these other rows as a guide to tell you what exactly you need to do as you go. To begin our first diamond on this next row, we would pick up 15 of our 15 OC beads and start working our way down to the right. Once you've created the first diamond with your 15 seed beads, you do the exact same thing that I already showed you up here where you begin attaching your diamonds together. Your third row is going to be attaching to your middle row, just like you already did, with the herringbone sitting freely. So every time you see a diamond, make sure that you're attaching it to the row next to you. So just so this video isn't a million years long and I've already shown you the steps and things you need to know in order to move on, just pause the video and back up to get to the steps where you are attaching another row to the middle and follow the same procedure, also finishing up that row with a loop of eight seed beads that you reinforce. And then at that point, you can tie off your work and pick up your long tail thread, put a needle on that one, and that's where we'll meet back and we'll pick it up from there. Welcome back again, everybody. So we are done with this entire side of the bracelet and you just follow the same kind of steps all the way through it. And you'll do the same thing to complete your other side, except here you can see that you'll be starting with your herringbone stitch coming right off of these three segments of netting. I did have to add about two additional feet of thread to finish my last row. So keep that in mind. If you don't want to add thread at all, maybe start with a seven or eight foot length on this one side, but some people don't like working with that much thread, so that's totally up to you. I have gone ahead and put the beading needle on my tail thread, and my tail thread is coming out of the exact same spot where we began the bracelet. To move forward from this point, my recommendation is to do everything in the same type of sequence that we did before. So you'll want to make your way out of the end of that middle row, and let's see where I'm coming out. I'm coming out right before that corner seed bead. So I'm just gonna skip over the corner, go through the next four to get my needle to be coming out of the end. And that's where we'll start the middle row of herringbone at this point in order to continue on with the rest of the length of the bracelet. And everything that I'm gonna do from this point on is going to mirror this side. So think of these three bicone netting rows as being the very center of the bracelet with this middle row in particular being the center. And we just wanna mirror everything we already did over here. So I'll be picking up with the herringbone. And I don't have to show you these steps because we already did plenty of this, but this is where I would start the bracelet with the herringbone, making my strip here of the seven beads in length. 
and then beading all the way down to the other end to where our clasp will be sitting. And with these tube clasps, you'll want to make sure that you have one side that's pointing up and one side that's pointing down. That way, when you go to close the bracelet, things will be facing the right side. And just like we did over here, you'll be attaching this side to each of these loops with a total of eight seed beads around each of those loops. So again, back up the video if you need to and mirror your work strip by strip all the way down and then we'll meet back and admire our work. I wanted to actually pop back in before we got to the very end of the bracelet just to make sure that this was all very clear since it is the same types of steps but there are a couple of very small nuances that are a little bit different. For example, when you work your way back around on one of the outer rows of beads and you're working your way back toward the center, once you have completed the longer herringbone stitch section that will be attaching to the center bicone netting, you can just attach that by going through that corner seed bead. and then back down through the herringbone and through the corner seed bead again to reinforce it a little bit. So I'm just going back up through that bead on the right and then through the corner seed bead there. And then to complete the rest of this top row of the bracelet, I'll just be following my thread path through the seed beads, come out of this seed bead on the corner of that diamond and then work my way back to the end of the bracelet towards the left hand side. So I'm going to keep going. I'm almost done with this piece. All right, everyone, here is a look at the finished bracelet all said and done on my wrist, clasp included. There we go. There's a look at the bottom side of that. I think it came out great. I hope you have fun with this pattern and maybe make it your own. Have fun picking out all different colors and maybe changing up how much netting you do versus how much of the herringbone, especially if you want to change the length at all. So huge thank you to you guys for being with me today. I hope you enjoyed this pattern. Keep in mind you can get everything you need and more at eurekacrystalbeads.com. I'll leave the full materials list with links down below the video where you can have fun checking out their great selection. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And also please subscribe while you're here so you can be notified when I'm posting new content. Feel free to leave me a comment or a question down below. I always love to hear from you. I'll be back again real soon. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, happy beating. Mm -hmm.